And to break it all down, I'm joined by Bruce Lavelle. He's the executive director of the National Diversity Coalition for Donald Trump. Thanks. So you've had an interesting weekend. Tell yeah. me your first reaction when you saw uh, that leaked videotape of Donald Trump. Well, you know, it, obviously the, the language wasn't, wasn't kosher. And Mr. Trump did apologize. You know, when I did you know, examine it, you know, it was kind of like guys laughing and talking to each other on that. He didn't know he was being uh, on audio or whatever. And it was just, you know, just locker room stuff talking. But do you ever talk like that? No, 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 I don't. I mean, do you know a lot of guys who talk I, like that? I will tell you this. I, I, uh, I served in ministry for many years as a volunteer and worked with youth. So I still work with young black men back in Atlanta mm -hmm. and mentor them. We do a lot of mentoring ship. And there, there is a strong, uh, you know, it, you know, one thing about this, Nancy, this bringing this out, this, this, I've always said that our campaign brings out a lot of the questions that need to be addressed, especially in our African American communities and on the black vote when he says, well, what do you have to lose with that uh, some of these municipalities and cities have been under Democrat rule. It's like, hey guys, you've had this, so let's, so a lot of things are being brought to the forefront, but it's also going to question a lot of people on how they do talk. Uh, privately uh, about uh, each other and making comments like that. So, so you're saying it's a good thing he's. Well, no, no, like no. That? It's 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 a good thing that that we can talk about this because this goes on and it will bring out to like guys mm -hmm. and, and ladies don't don't talk like this. You know this. But is, do you think that someone who does talk like that should be president of the United States? Well, you know he's he's a man and he said that happened in 2005 and he said he's a different man in terms of uh, traveling. Uh, the, the the country and mm -hmm. meeting so many different people and realizing and, and and you know Nancy you know I represent National Diversity Coalition for Trump we're the largest diversity coalition ever in the history of a Republican candidate we have over a million signups we have Mexican Americans for Trump you know um, Korean Americans for Trump CJ Tara Muslim Americans for Trump Filipino Americans for Trump Haitian Americans for Trump African American pastor for Trump and I will tell you, I've been talking to a lot of our advisors for the last couple of days. They're still on board with Mr. Trump. They're mm -hmm. strong. You know, they're just like, well, okay, he apologized. We move on. So we're, we're still 1,000% we're still behind him. Uh, on the same day that this tape was made public, mm -hmm. Donald Trump also said uh, that the Central Park Five, right. who were exonerated, wrongfully mm -hmm. convicted, right should not have been exonerated, that perhaps they even should have been executed. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Because there are a lot of people in the African-American community mm -hmm. and Latino communities, right. the people you're reaching out to, who say that's even worse than yeah. something that he said in a joking way 11 years ago. Yeah. Well, you know, it, we're talking about something in the 80s. I know a lot of folks. Uh, but uh, he's probably, talking about it now. Well, you know, at the end of the day, back in the 80s, I remember traveling to New York and, it, and you, you remember being like, don't get caught in Central Park after dark. And it was. There was a lot of uh, unfortunate crime in the community, and the statement that went out was not directed towards that. It was a it was a direction towards what happened to the young lady that was raped and murdered, and the other murders that went on in the community to say, hey, we need to bring back the death penalty because the United States, if I'm not mistaken, does have 31 states that you know exercise capital punishment. Mm -hmm. So that was just a statement like, look, if you guys are going to go out here killing everyone, then we need to have something to stop this. So that was more of a of a call to uh, you know. New York to say, hey, you go out and rob, you do this, we want the That's death That's not necessarily what he said. He said that these five men, African-American, Latino men, who were wrongfully convicted shouldn't have been exonerated, even though, what does that say about his respect for the rule of law? Well, you know, it, now this is what I've always said from day one, Nancy, and I'm not trying to dodge your question, that a Donald Trump administration is actually going to help our justice system. And, and I've always said that when you have a man or woman that runs without any special interest group or anything tied to you, mm -hmm. you are, you are going to have the best ability to choose the best attorney general, the best, everything that goes down, that trickles down under that type of administration. So with that being said, a prosecution that dropped the ball, a prosecution that rushed through political ties and other uh, elected officials who were infected by the system mm -hmm. who owe their constituents and their backing to say hey we got to make a decision they forced that on these children really quick and mm -hmm. made a quick judgment so you know I, I think it's fair to say that respectfully that it's a, it's it's a it's a combination of all types of law enforcement and other elected officials that was part of all of this so the Trump administration not being holding to any special interest group mm -hmm. no super PACs no that's going to be refreshing for him to choose 
people that aren't beholding to these groups. That's going to put a mayor under pressure. Say, hey, you got to make a decision. You got to do something. We're going to get reelected if you don't do something. So they they rush that on those children. So it, it's 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 infected across the board. Respectfully. So that's a strong argument. But right. when you look at the polls, right. Uh, the vast majority of African American voters, mm. Latino voters, aren't sticking around to hear that argument because they're so turned off by things that he has said in this election about African Americans, yeah. about Mexican Americans, right. about Muslims. How do you, as the diversity coordinator, get them to hear that message when they've already said, no way I can vote for this guy? Well, I, I think, you know, and I do talk to several <laughs> thousands of people across the country, I really do. In terms of, let's go down the list, African American uh, supporters. Donald Trump has never said anything racially derogatory towards African Americans. And I'm going to go down the list here in a well, second. Well, he's said that they're getting shot in the streets, well, and their, their communities are hopeless. Yes, some. And, yeah, and that's that true. why not vote for me? Because yeah. you ain't got anything better yeah, to do. Yeah, when, when, you know, unfortunately, when you look at some of the cities in Detroit, and I actually serve in ministry and help certain parts of Atlanta who are under duress of Democrat rule and the same old, same old for 30, 40 years. So it's, it's a fair argument to say, well, you guys have had this so long. What the heck do you have to lose? That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. So when, when you have nothing and you've been doing the same old, same old, forget about all the, the sound bites of things or he's this or he's that. People are going to go in that curtain in November 8th and they're going to say, you know, especially black folk. He says, you know, he's keeping it real. He's talking about stop and frisk. Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's something that's, that turns off. You know, I was talking voters. to a close friend of mine. He's the CEO of a diversity coalition and he's a pastor in Cleveland, uh, uh, you know, in Cleveland. And he told me last week, he says, you know, Bruce, I wish they would have had some form of that in another part of Cleveland where his nephew wouldn't have got gunned down and shot. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much as a stop and frisk. There are other things in terms of body cameras, you know, good legislation that uh, bringing more police. There's more to it. It's not just that being the only thing in those communities. But most of all, in order to have economic growth, people talk about jobs in a lot of the African-American communities. I know this for a fact. I served on a community uh, district board and I serve on a police board and a lot of boards. And that one thing I know, you can't have any economic growth or any good schools without public safety. So public safety is going to have to be addressed extremely aggressive. And it's going to be uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, you know, we're at a point now where we had several, you know, 3,000 plus murders in Chicago and other cities. So at, at what point do we say, you know, what, what do we have to lose? What, what, we have to do whatever we can to save our children. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a very, very emotional tie to Mr. Trump's heart. I know that for a fact. Bruce Lavelle, the diversity coordinator for the Trump campaign. Thanks. Thank you so much for Thanks. joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right.